Hi guys, we've got another piece of hardware to review. This one, it came in from the Netherlands, which is really strange because I buy it on Alibaba. And of course, usually when you get something there, it comes in from China, or we had the Jaiwawang S200, which came in from, uh, I think it was Singapore. But this was really strange that it came in from the Netherlands, so it took a little bit more time. But um, either way, however it comes over here, that's fine. Let's just get to it. This is strange. Wow, the box is actually different than what I saw would come in. But well, let's see. <laughs> Seriously, I I didn't see that it was going to come in like this. What what the hell is going on? <laughs> okay, there's these kids that are playing on a original Famicom console. And, oh, and you can even tell that it is the original... Nintendo Famicom because you could see it's kind of blurry but it says family computer and controller 1 has start and select controller 2 doesn't because controller 2 on the Famicom had a microphone and it said 80s I, I don't know why it says 80s right there you'll also notice that it's from that company Subur who I think it's pronounced Subor maybe I don't know but it's with those two boxing gloves and uh, it's the same people who made that uh, Shia Obawang S200 anyways though uh, what? The memory of the 80. What the heck does that mean? Okay, the back is the same, except that's weird. It has 80, so then this one it has symbol of an 80. This is strange. But yeah, it's different than what I imagined it, because when I actually ordered it, it showed the box for it, and it was actually the same box as the Shaobuang S200. And so, yeah, this was actually a surprise because I was expecting to get the same box as this one and be like, oh, hey, I recognize you. You're this guy. But um, actually, no, that's really strange. Um, and also, you'll see that, actually, I'll just open it. There's the horrible player. It also comes with headphones, a mini to full USB, power, inspection sticker, and that's it. Okay, and also it's an 8 gigabyte model. Uh, ooh, it has the super hologram. Wow, that's how I know it's quality. Anyways though, let's look at the model right here. Okay, so you'll see that it's actually a PSP clone, which is very popular in China, of course. But, anyways, the reason that I thought it was so interesting is because since they were showing that it would come in the box that the Shaobuang S200 came in, I was thinking, I was like, wow, I tracked down the actual unit that was supposed to come in this box instead of the S200. But, anyways, that was not the only reason why. I had also gotten it because, apparently, this thing will play PS1 games. And that's something really cool because, as a kid growing up, I remember seeing some guy who had modded... I don't know what he actually modded, but um, it was a PS1 that was portable. It had like a, the disk drive in the back and everything. And I was just amazed. I was blown away because you have to remember that back then, like the hottest handheld was the GBA. So to think that someday you might be able to play PlayStation 1 games on the go, that was just incredible. And so uh, little did I know that with emulation and everything, someday we would be able to. But, uh, so this thing, it doesn't really do anything that Android wouldn't be able to. However, it doesn't run Android as far as I could tell. But the crazy thing is, though, they only cost me, like, I think $33 or so. So these things are becoming incredibly cheap. And uh, I hope I got the right one, because it seems that there are some models that don't include the PS1 emulator. Um, let's take a quick look around it. It looks like it has start and select, and also there's power, and it looks like a mute button right there. Um, and then typical PSP controls. Ah, and again, they have the typical Chinese, and I'm even going to start calling it this now, the Chinese D-pad layout, where each D-pad direction is its own button, which is extremely aggravating. I hate it when they have that. And really, they just do it as a cost-cutting measure. I don't know why they don't just put a copper D-pad on there. But either way, so it has the Chinese D-pad. Then it has analog nub, which is actually... Wow, that actually feels pretty good. It's a little bit smaller, it seems like, than the PSP original analog nub. But um, 
I don't know, that seems actually, like, it seems like they got the height and the feel just right. Anyways, so moving along, then on this side, they have this nifty little pop-out section where, which doesn't pop out quite, quite back enough. Um, and also the plastic, it feels really brittle right there. Like, it's not, it, it barely feels rubberized. Like, this feels like plastic that I'm bending and it'll never go back again. Uh, so that's for the mini USB and headphones. Yeah. Uh, oh, headphones and TV out. That's good. And then, uh, micro SD. All right. So they have that. And, wow, they even have a little L and a little R right there for L and R. And then this is hold. Wait, wait. It says on and off. Really? So why do they have this on button here? Anything? Anybody home? Ah, there we go. And yeah, Subur. One of my favorite companies now. And also, I think it's touchscreen. I think. Is it? Oh, it is. Uh, let's go to pictures. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm going to have to do a jump cut. It, Touchscreen is horrible, or if not, there's really bad lag on this thing. Yeah, I think it's just a bad, bad touchscreen and OS. And also, the battery seems very, very low. No file. Well, okay, get me back. Um, how do we get home? Select? No. Oh, that muted the volume. Press start, nothing happened. Ah, there we go. Okay, I pressed X. Um, let's go to... Don't they have anything else? Oh, there we go. Okay, you press up and down to go to the different options. Okay, so there's game, GBA, 3D arcade, flash game, theme, color, brightness, painting, <laughs> calendar, calculator. Okay, so it seems like... Oh, there's a little cursor. Oh, okay. Huh. Let's try out GBA. <laughs> God, this touch, touch screen is horrible. Yeah, I don't think the touch screen really works that well. I'm just going to have to use the buttons. Um... Let's go F0. Ah, shoot, I forgot. Okay. Ah! Damn it! I got out. Uh, I always have to remember, uh, it seems that they're doing the Japanese layout for the PSP buttons. So, unlike America, where usually X means OK, uh, instead for the Japanese uh, layout, the O is OK and the X is Cancel. Uh, okay, let's find something good. Uh, F-Zero, there we go. Um, okay, restart, sure. <laughs> I can already tell this one, the quality is not feeling very good. And the music blares out from the one speaker on there. Plays pretty well. Ah, I wish I played better. <laughs> ah, low power. Damn it. Okay, this thing needs to be charged before I can do anything else. 
But either way, first impressions are not very good. It seems like the quality is barely any better than anything else I've seen on there. Anyways, though, that's all that I could do right now. I will be back momentarily with the rest of the review. Alright, everyone, we're back. I've been using this for a few weeks now, and uh, we got a lot to talk about. You'll notice that, first of all, I took off that little tab because it was just annoying me to no end. Uh, it's kind of that, like, hard plastic. It's, it's not super hard, but it feels almost kind of brittle. And so it would never bend back into place exactly as it should. So I decided to just take it off and throw it away. But um, either way, let's turn it on, and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. One of the strange things is that you nudge this down to turn it on. I always thought that was kind of weird. But oh well, there's the Super logo. Thank you, Super. Ah, there we go. Alright, so when you turn it on, then you have like your option of books or games. Books, they're like some Chinese ebooks that they put on there. And let's do this. You'll also notice that after you push the button, at least on the menus, not really in the games, but on the menus, after you push the button, it really like takes maybe a second for it to actually register. But let's see. First, I just want to tell you that the touch screen is terrible. Absolutely terrible. I don't think I've ever seen a touch screen that is this bad. Let's go into painting. There we go. You see that little delay? Um, all right, so painting, look, I'm touching the screen right here. You guys can tell I'm touching, nothing's happening. But then I put a little bit more pressure, and you know what, let's change it. Let's change it. There we go, thank you. All right, so now we're on the big marker type, and again, touching and nothing is showing up. Then I put a little bit more pressure, and now, now we actually get something. You see, I'm putting actually a lot of pressure on this. I wouldn't do this to my phone, but... Yeah, it's actually quite a bit of pressure, and I, I wouldn't do that to any device that was worth more than 30 bucks. So, yeah, the touchscreen is just really bad. Anyways, the battery life is also something that's really bad on this, because it seriously lasts for maybe, if you're playing a really intense game, it'll probably last for maybe two hours at the most, I'm betting. But it's hard to estimate, because this little uh, reader right here, the little bars of battery life it's very very unreliable so it's sometimes you'll just go into a game and it'll instantly say it has one bar of life left and you know that it doesn't because you just charged it but either way it will do that and I have seen that it will actually go down quite a bit so again I'm just estimating it's probably gonna be about two hours that you have when you're playing this but anyways let's look at the games that we have here um, there are a few games that are, uh, God, I think they use maybe, um, I think they're Neo Geo games. I'm pretty sure, because when you go in there, yeah, it does say Neo Geo. Either way, there are some games right here that you guys might recognize. I think one of them is like that Dynasty Warriors beat-em-up game. But then there's also, uh, some fighting games here. Uh, they're all renamed, though. It's really strange. Well, some of them are. Like, you have the Punisher here, which is actually the Punisher arcade game. And these are all arcade games that you're seeing. Uh, Fatal Fury, um, Samurai, I think that's Samurai Showdown right there. And uh, Final Fight, of course, Dino Strike is one that they renamed, and that one's actually Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. And that's one of my favorite beat em up and shoot em up games. So I really like that they include that. They also have Metal Slug Zero right here. They don't say it's zero, but on the description it just says Metal Slug. But on the picture, let's see if you could see it. It says Metal Slug Zero very clearly, but Metal Slug Zero, as I looked it up, it's actually an MMO. So it's not even Metal Slug Classic as we know it. Come on, please come back. Alright. So again, there's that weird delay. Let me show you. <sighs> Look, I pressed down and it's still not doing it. There you go. Now it did it. But anyways, one of the cool things that I have to give this device credit for is that you can actually have save states and that's something that I've been kinda out of the uh, Neo Geo emulation scene for a while because really I think it really reached its peak and I don't even think they have any games that have compatibility problems at least not that I've seen not that I'm aware of so I think that that's already taken care of and so that's why I kind of you know stopped paying attention to them but one of the really really fiddly things about them that was really annoying is that you could not have save states and so in other words if you played a game 
to my memory, you had to basically play through it all right there. You couldn't pause it and, you know, save your game or whatever. But this one, you actually do have save states. That's really cool. And uh, so I have used them. They do work. And that's something that I wasn't prepared for. That's actually really, really interesting. Anyways, let's go to... You have to go to reset in order to get the thing to actually play. And also you can use the touch screen, but again, it's terrible. You'll have to touch it like four times for it to work. Anyways, let's select it. Oh, that time I actually did it pretty quickly. But either way, please wait, please wait. It's like it's buffering. I hate that little logo. There you go. There's Neo Geo. It actually plays them pretty well. Every one of the games that it plays, though, it has its hiccups here and there. But um, either way, they do work. They are playable. And it plays it pretty well. And like I said, I really like that it has safe states, so that's something that I was really, really happy about. Ah! Bastards. Alright, let's get out of here. And you press the left um, shoulder button in order to get out. And that goes for everything. And you'll see that that might be a problem later on. But, let's go back. There we go. Alright, and now again we can use the touch screen. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it, though. One of the weird things, though, is that it has this button right here for theme. So you press theme, and then basically you're just changing the background. But the weird thing is that it will go ahead and reset it anyways when you turn it off. So when you turn it back on, it's going to be at the default uh, background setting anyways. I thought that was kind of weird. Alright, then uh, there's the GBA emulator. And it plays GBA pretty well. Like I said, it has its hiccups here and there, but it's all pretty competent. And, um, let me see, so yeah, they're just regular GBA files, uh, and here's one thing, there's not really anything interesting on here, there's not, uh, like Mario games or anything like that, so there's very little that's actually interesting on this, but, um, one of the weird things is that when you go down on here, you go down to 100, and then it restarts right away, you see Toy Kingdom is the last one, and then Action Man is the first of all of them because it's in alphabetical order of course but you see toy kingdom is the last one and then action man is the first one so at 101 it already resets and let's go back up and there's like power rangers and a few other ones on here but again nothing too big there's f-zero which was probably the only good one that i really saw all right so you see number one is action man and then number eight thousand toy kingdom so you see, it just resets every 100 until you get up to 8,000. So really, it's just 100 games on there. It's not 8,000, of course. Um, let's go back to the emulators. Uh, then 3D arcade game. I think that is, I want to say CPS1. I think it is because, let me go down. Um, Mega Man. Yeah, here you go. Alright, so there's these two Mega Man games, Mega Man series, and then just regular Mega Man without even, like, a space in between. And, uh, I thought that those were two different games. I was like, hey, cool, there's two Mega Man arcade games on here. But actually, no, they're the exact same thing. It's that Mega Man, uh, what is that called? It's, I don't know, but it's that tournament fighter that everybody hates. And, uh, I actually thought that one was pretty good. I don't know why people hate it so much. But I haven't really spent a lot of time in it, in it either. Uh, flash game. Oh my god. No, oh, this is just bad. Let's go into flash game. And these are so terrible because you can't use any of the buttons. You have to use the touch screen, which is, of course, the biggest weak point of possibly the biggest weak point of this whole. We're going to get into that later. <laughs> the touch screen might be the weakest point of this whole console. And, um,. Let me see, let me give you an example. Uh, and some of them don't even work, like, I think... Eating the Big Fish? I don't think that one works. Let's see. Oh, it does. Okay, by the way. New game. Start. And so you see, now I'm controlling, I guess, the Red Fish? Yeah, you see, then I could eat the little smaller ones. And this is just one of those stupid Flash games where... You have to get bigger and bigger, then you can eat the bigger fish, so you have to avoid the big fish right now and just eat the smaller fish. But soon as I get bigger, I'll be able to 
eat those bigger fish. But right now, I all I could do is just avoid them. You see, as long as you put enough pressure on here, then it will work. The touch screen will work, but that's being the most generous that you could be with it. Ah, you see there, I just got a green fish. Ugh, yeah, it's pretty bad. So then we press that button to get out, and again, none of the other buttons work when you're doing this. You can only press this one, and then you get out. All these games right here, all the Flash games, they're all touch screen, all of them. And, um... Really, it's it's bad. There's nothing, nothing good here. There's some sort of Naruto game. Let me see. I've never been into that series, but <laughs> it says Naruto Hentai Game. And I don't know. I'm not a big guy with anime or anything, but Hentai, that's always been a very scantily uh, type of genre, I think, at least from popular culture, what I've heard. All right, so that's some freaking Naruto thing where you just dodge shots really I mean that's really all you do you just tap around the screen and he does this flapping thing I don't know, it looks like he's swimming and does that ever happen in the show or something I don't know but uh, let's get out of there and let's get the hell out of these flash games ah, it's just terrible alright so after testing this out for a couple weeks I gotta say that the controls they're actually okay um, again, I criticize the D-pad because it's that little split version of it, but um, the D-pad actually works all right. Let me see if you guys can look at it right here. It actually did use some intelligent design here. You see how the top and bottom ones are different than the left and right? And also, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it kind of dips in. It focus, yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it does dip in just a little bit, and that helps you out a little bit too, because these buttons over here, they don't do anything like that. But either way, it doesn't feel just like how a D-pad should feel, but it does feel okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's, it's not bad, but I'm not about to say that it's good. So take that for whatever it is. That's definitely not a recommendation. Don't take that as like, a, hey, you know, he's, seen, he's saying that this is a, a great console. No. There are plenty of good consoles out there. I'm just saying that this D-pad, you could work with it. It's all right. It's doing fine, but it's not good. Another thing I do have to mention is that maybe about the third or fourth time that I turned this thing on, it did lock up on me. And uh, so it was just locked on that like super logo that you get right after you turn it on. And um, it, it stayed on there for a long time, maybe about 10 minutes, but... I kept turning it on and off hoping that it would correct it and uh, I even took it apart actually to see if there was maybe like a hard reset switch or something and there isn't. But um, anyways though, uh, and it was pretty easy to take apart. There was just these four little bolts right here. And uh, oh, and in case you guys are wondering, the one person out there is wondering, yes, the camera is absolute shit. It's absolutely terrible. And um, Either way, yeah, I don't know why China's obsessed with cameras on their PMP devices. I I don't get it. But either way, so it did lock up on me, so it's not 100% reliable. But after I left it out for like 10 minutes, just there stuck on the screen, it did actually come back. And uh, now that I think about it, I think I even connected it to my computer. And then when I took it away from the computer, it did actually start running again. But either way, so this thing, it isn't the most reliable thing ever. And um, also, the uh, I don't know why it says on the box 80s or uh, something about that. I think it was trying to emphasize that, hey, you can play games from the 80s on here. And But again, all the games that are on here, all the arcade games, they're all from the 90s, including all the CPS1 games and everything. And the Flash games, I'm very sure that those didn't exist in the 80s. So that's really strange. But it does emulate a few other devices that it didn't even talk about. And we'll talk about that in a second. And lastly, before we get into the emulators, the TV out sucks. It's this little thing right here. So it's basically the headphones jack. And uh, that's really common that on these devices, the headphones will be the same port that you use for TV out. Anyways, so this is like the standard 3.5 millimeter jack. You see, watch. They're from two different brands, of course. But look, when you line them up together, they're identical. So you see the same length and everything. They're just different designs. This one's like a horizontal style. This one is just in line, vertical style. But when we put it on this thing, and it does have TV out. When you go into settings, uh, it'll let you select it and everything. I'm 
If you guys seen it once, then you've seen it all. But uh, and in case you guys are wondering, these they basically go to basic RCA input. Anyways, when we do this though, you see I've put it down there as far as it'll go. And then I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, you can. You see, it doesn't make a perfect connection. It's not flush. You see on another handheld, this is the Shioba Wong S200 that was once a star on our program. On these ones, and this one is actually different, it has the headphones and a TV out here separately. Anyway, so we put this in TV out, and it fits flush, it works. Bada bing, bada boom, you got TV out. This one though, it, what did I select? I think this is calendar. All right, let's use the touch screen to go back. To go back, thank you. Ah, I hate that delay. But anyways, so in order to get this to work though, you have to jam it in there, and then you uh, just cram it in, and it fits gracefully, as you can see. I mean, it, it just fits wonderfully. And then finally, it makes contact right there at the bottom. And then hopefully, if you did it right, hopefully if it makes the connection, then you will have TV out. Or at least you'll have TV out until you bump that cable one micron, just one micron, and then the whole thing just goes to shit. Now, as I said, this thing, it'll play Game Boy Advance, and the selection of games, it's pretty lukewarm, but it did have this, like, Soccer Island type thing, and when I looked it up, that game is actually called Go Go Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island. And that game is not bad. That game is actually pretty good. I had some fun with it. Then I load some other GBA ROMs on there, and they do work. It doesn't say it anywhere on the box or anything, but it also plays NES, Super NES, Game Boy Color, and Sega Genesis ROMs. They all play fairly okay. Every now and then you'll get a hiccup or, you know, some sort of audio or visual glitch, but otherwise they seem to work just fine. They did alter some of the button mappings, so playing Sega Genesis feels really, really strange. And now let's get to the star of the show, PlayStation emulation. Surprise, surprise, it sucks. I could not find any games that consistently ran at full speed. The first game I tried was Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now there's a reason that I tried that. It's because Symphony of the Night is known as one of the best games ever. I even said in the Castlevania book review episode, I even said that it is video game perfection. So it's a really good game, and it works on a lot of emulators because it's a simple 2D game. So it's pretty easy to get an emulator to work with it. When I try it on this device, it will work and play at full speed, so long as you're the only thing on the screen. Once you add in any enemies, and especially if they have, you know, some sort of a throwing weapon, then it will just slow down to an unplayable speed. And there's so much lag in the controls when you're playing at that speed that it's impossible to get past anything. So really this game, it is unplayable. Even Symphony of the Night is unplayable on this device. I tried some other games too, and to be honest, some of them worked better than others. But there were a lot of surprises too. Like for instance, Croc, it will work. But again, it's too choppy and the frame rate is all over the place, so that too is unplayable. And Ridge Racer, which is a simple game because it was a launch title for the PlayStation, that one actually performs worse. So then it actually became like a challenge for me to find a game that will actually work on this thing at a playable speed. I came up with three games that seem to be playable on this device. The first is Harmful Park. This is a Japanese 2D cute em up and it works fairly good. It's playable. The next one I found is another shoot em up and it's called Einhander and I was really surprised to see this one working. But I will admit that it did get less playable as I progressed further into the game. And the third game I found is another Japanese title called Pepsi Man. To all the endless runners on mobile platforms, I want you to meet your father. This game was released only in Japan. It has an American stereotype in there who is almost offensive, but not quite. And to be honest, the game is not bad for being a licensed game. It plays fairly well here, but that's all relative. And lastly, I found another game which was at a barely playable speed, but it is a very fun game nonetheless. It's called LSD Dream Emulator, and it is one of my favorite games. This game really deserves its own episode. The story behind it is that the developer, he logged in all of his dreams that he had like over, god I don't know, like a two or three year period, and then he made a game about it, and the crazy thing is that the game, it's like completely random. 
So every now and then you'll just be walking and then an elephant will fly through the sky or something. It is a dream emulator and it lives up to exactly what you would expect it to. Again on this thing it doesn't really play it at a perfect frame rate, it is kind of choppy. But it still works and I was really surprised by that. And plus it's a pretty simple game so you don't even use all the buttons on the controller. And that's a good thing because like I said the left shoulder button it acts as the exit or menu button. And that's really bad for PlayStation 1 because even the most simple games use both shoulder buttons. So in conclusion, as an emulation device, I gotta say that this device is not that bad. But just like I said with the D-pad, don't read into that and think that I mean that it's any good. Everything that's not PlayStation or a Flash game on this thing plays fairly well, but I can name you 10 other devices that do the exact same thing and in a much better package. The big reason why I wanted to get this one is because it has that PlayStation emulator. But really, the PlayStation emulation barely works. And they knew this because it didn't even include any PlayStation games on there. They knew that whatever game they put on there, it still wouldn't be playable. So the bad PlayStation emulation really brings this device down. So much so that I probably wouldn't recommend it. I guess if you're looking for something in the $30 price range that does all the other stuff, then maybe this is the device that you're looking for. But for me, the only thing that would justify the $30 price of admission is the PlayStation emulation. And unfortunately, it's just not there. It doesn't work. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, guys.